But think about this. When you, when the dog is pushed, it catches itself. How? It's the gyros and everything, all the imbalances, and it does the very, very quick math to catch itself. It's programmed to catch itself. What, what, what happens when catch itself changes or evolves because it has AI? Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Sock, sock, shoe, shoe, sock, shoe, sock, shoe. Uh, Remember when I brought that up? Yeah. Remember that? That like I was going to say not this again. No, no, no. It's this again. I got it. <laughs> All right. I'll play your game. Let's go. What do you got? Now, this one's actually from my son. My son sent me this. He said, I think that this would be a good like opening question for you guys. And he sent it to me and I just couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, yes, we're doing that. Uh, okay, so here, here's, here's, we're just going to start it off with this. It, it's called an attendance question, but my son came up with this one. What is the largest animal you think you could beat in a fight? <laughs> no, <laughs> no human weapons, uh, but things like rocks and tree branches are allowed. Also, humans get field advantage, home field advantage. So if you say alligator, then that's a fight on land. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so what's the, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So you can't you know you can't use guns or swords or anything anything like that, but whatever is available to you. What's the largest animal you could beat the fight? with a tree branch? <laughs> I oh, like what? How how confident do I need to be that I will win? Uh, like there's a chance I'm I could say, win. I'll, let's say eighty percent, eighty percent confidence. Percent. Oh man, I think I could beat a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bear. I was, I know. I was going to say bear. I feel like, okay, I watch a lot of those like wilderness shows, you know? Yeah. And I've seen the bears and I've seen them like chase them off even. And I feel like with a tree branch, I, it's like a baseball bat. I could probably like, whack it upside the maybe head. Maybe a small baby black bear. But anything Fair over enough. like two months old is going to probably tear Fair you in half enough. like a phone book. All right. Um... <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll go. How about coyote? A oh, coyote. I still. I mean, it's something dangerous. I'm gonna, you know, peacock. I was being yeah. funny, but you know, something. It still have to be kind of like a dangerous animal, right? If you're in a fight, you're not fighting. Yeah, you know. But you're in a you're in a straight up fist fight with a coyote. And no, I have a tree branch. <laughs> you said tree branch was I allowed. Okay, yes, you can use rocks and tree branches and stuff. Yeah. This, this, so this coyote. I'm closes. gonna strap a rock to the end of the tree branch <laughs> and use like a sledgehammer. I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> See, I'm I'm bushcrafting. <laughs> hold on, Mr. Coyote. Just hold on. Go back to filming your acme with the uh with with the kind with the with the roadrunner. Let me wrap this rock to this. I'm thinking, I don't know, turtle. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna beat a whole. I don't think even a coyote. At least a snapping turtle. I'm like, because it is why why would a turtle get in a fight with you? <laughs> Well, with this, we're not answering what started the conflict. <laughs> so it started why, the why is this coyote yeah. upset with you? Yeah. Uh, anyways, so I don't know. I, coyote might not be, a, but if that coyote closes the gap, dude. I mean, if it was just one, it wasn't in a, in a pack yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. You know, and I, have, and I have a tree branch with a rock strapped to the end of it. I think I'm in good shape. A koala bear. Koala bear. Maybe- I wouldn't mess with like. Like I was gonna say panda at first, but like they can get they can uh, get brutal. They will destroy. Well, because I wanted to go big. You said how the, the biggest that you, you know, can beat, not can die beat. to instantly. Yeah. yeah, panda would definitely wreck. Uh, face. It would destroy you while while eating bamboo with its other hand. Yeah, exactly. It would be nothing for it. <laughs> uh, all right, we're talking about the future today. We want to. We so wanna let's dive just in. let's just step back a second. That literally, that question had zero to do with the actual podcast yeah, topic. Zero. Not Zero. one bit. There, yeah. there's no, there's no way to tie in how getting in a fight with an animal relates to what the future of humanity is going to look like. That's correct. There's no way. No. Okay. That was just a fun opening question, and right. uh, we're we're going to dive into what does the future look like in a fun way. Like for, I'm thinking more like technology, and I mean not in the future of you know what, the podcast. I'm talking about like, mm, let's say two, three hundred years from yeah. now. What does the world look like from a technology standpoint? You know, from I'm, I'm I don't know about you, but I'm just I'm not interested in talking about politics or anything. I don't care about right. that. I'm talking about just like you know, because we're we're really witnessing technology is just continues to do its thing in regards to where it's evolving at an exponential rate, right? We're watching this yeah. happen. 
So what does that mean? What 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 does the technology look like, and what is its implications? Yeah. Right. I want to preface this a little bit with uh, the fact that obviously these are all just just us having like a hy- not even a hypothesis, like just just guess wild guesses because of course. like humanity has been known to swing and miss on this topic big yeah, time yeah right like where is our hoverboards flying shoe or flying cars shoes that tie them, them their themselves well, i think that's the thing and remember the jacket remember the jacket the that's self dried yeah right where, yeah. Where, where is all that stuff that was promised to us like they went to the future just blame it was actually like years ago for us uh, now yeah and we was. don't have any of that it's stuff eight years ago what the heck man that's the mecca so take upset. it up with the back to the future come yeah. on i want my hoverboard i missed. want it yeah missed don't do and it. don't anybody try to say these hoverboards that that, that actually do exist are are are, are any way yeah. relatable to what was being they're shown not. in the movie. You know why? They because have they're wheels. not hovering. They have wheels. They are yeah. literally on the ground. Yeah. They need to hover, homie. <laughs> have you seen now? I've seen little like working models of this when they do like um uh like magnets. Magnets. But yeah. it's like, but they're using like this, it's like there's like this like frost coming off. It's like super cooled or something. I don't really understand it. So it might be possible, just not very practical. I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to figure that one out. It wasn't there like some big computer guy that that like back in the early computer days, like said in the future computers will be yeah. four times the, the size, size twice and, as fast and twice as fast <laughs> and now we literally have computers in our pocket the size of our palm that are a, a billion, billion times, times more faster. powerful <laughs> and, he, and he was also like and only the five richest people in the world yeah. will have them and i remember <laughs> i remember thinking like when i've heard that i'm like well who who are they talking to each other yeah. You know what I mean? You need more than five people. That's a very small internet, man. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what the internet was back then, but yeah. So yeah, that's my preface is like, obviously we'll probably we're just be, swinging we'll and having way fun. off, but Hey, I mean, we might be around to see it. We, we some right? of it, some of it. What if, what Ooh, if, here we go. Right. We're going to freeze our heads. We don't need to. What if, what if technology advances before you and I pass in a way that we didn't see coming and, we could actually stay alive for as long as we wanted. Like they, they somehow have figured out how to, I don't know if they've, they've given us mechanical everything, right. you know, right. And, and diseases are, are all figured out. There's no cancer, nothing. Right. And they can just, as long as you want to stay alive, like maybe we have to pay for it. Like maybe that's, you know, yeah. You they had the, Hey, listen, man, there's a lot, there's, it depends on what your version of alive is. Are you talking about in your body? Because because if you're talking about in your in your vessel, so where you are still you, like you still that's have your right? brain, your character, like which, everything else can be changed, right? Which arguably some people would would say. That, I mean, this is this is what like I love. You know, I love the show Black Mirror. If you have not seen the show Black Mirror, have you watched any? I've episodes? watched a few. They they get wild. They get like, very wild. Like they like to the point to where my brain is like, I don't think I can handle this. And oh, I stopped watching. Oh, they're exhausting. Yeah. I can only watch one at a time, and like literally maybe one. Uh, a week because I, I tried to watch them back to back. And by the time I was in the middle of the second one, I'm like, I don't have the brain power to keep up yeah. because it is so, it's so exhausting because the story is that deep. It's that moving. And uh, one of them, there's this really clever one where you can create this. Um, uh, let's see, you can create your own assistant, right? <clears throat> and the premise is that what they do is they basically take your, your brain and the theory, this is all we're obviously talking about theory, but the theory of all this is that all of your memories, all your thoughts, all of your behaviors, it's all just synapses and electric. It's, it's a computer. It's a big, it's a big computer chip. That's what our brain is, right? That's, that's the, the theory here. And they can basically take a copy of your brain and put it into an actual computer. That's what it is. But what they do is they put it into sort of a simulator so that it's a little like hologram of you that knows everything that you need and everything that you want. Because it's you. It has all your things. And you pay for this service and they create this little hologram. And essentially this thing takes care of your appointments and schedules the things you need and knows what you like. And it just, it, it's your assistant, your personal assistant that's based on you. But the thing is, what they do is they take you through the POV of that entity. Now, what they do is very, very fascinating in this episode where uh, this woman goes to pay for it. She's very busy. She needs her own assistant. Oh, I heard of this company that does this. And uh, they scan her brain or what do they do? And then boom, it happens. Boom. And then she's like, it's, it's over. It's over. Like that was painless. And she's like, okay, it's over. And then she realizes, wait, where am I? 
and she is the entity, <laughs> right? And she's in there. There's and she's in this big white room. There's nothing there, dude. Nothing. And she just starts to freak out. Like, what is this? What I, I was just un- undergoing this procedure, and now what is this? And this giant head shows up. I forget <laughs> the actor's name. He's this like really good looking dude. That's uh, and you recognize him like this. And he and he says to her, and he's looking down at her because she's a little hologram thing. And he says. I imagine you must be pretty confused right now. And and he basically is part of the company. Mm-hmm. And he says to her, he says, let me run you through this. And he steps her through it. She's like, no, 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 no. You have this mixed up. I'm the one who was getting the assistant. And he's like, no, you know what I mean? He's like, you are the assistant. And that's why it feels that way because you have all the, ma- and she just, she just can't hang. Yeah. And she starts yelling at him. He goes, yeah, this is normal. He goes, so how about this? Why don't you think about it for a couple hours? And he like turns this dial, like he like closes the lid or whatever it is. He turns this dial. That's like two hours to him. It's a, fraction of a second comes back and it's two hours later she's like where have you been you know what i mean she starts like screaming at him he's like yeah same you gotta do some calming down so i'll tell you what let's take a week off and he and he scans it it's it's a week to her dude and he just twists the dial it's two seconds to him he just does whatever he does goes a week comes back and she's just like this frazzled mess and she's he's like yeah you ready to talk she's like yes but i need you to listen to me and she starts to freak out you know <laughs> and and he's like your job is going to be to do this and he's doing this whole thing and she's just like you know what and she starts to freak out he's like yeah it's a, let's give you six months and he does this thing Jeez. she has nothing so he comes back and she is broken she's like give me something to do and he's like there you are and now she just becomes his assistant right so the idea being that it, she was this whole entity so maybe you're right maybe in the future <laughs> you, it's almost like you could like transport to somebody else but that's not that's just too much. That's too out there. I don't believe yeah. it. I don't believe, I don't think it's going to be a thing. It could, but I don't think that's going to be a no, thing. I, I had to go straight to like, not far fetched, but you know, it could be. Uh, it could be. Like, know. like nobody knows. That's the whole point. Yeah. You know, but it's fun to like think about like, what would it, what would it be like if, like, it, it, for humanity's sake, I hope we're not all given the option to live forever. You no, know what I, I mean? Yeah. Because we're not like, death is a, death is a part of it like yeah. how we sustain as as beings yeah. on this planet is you you need the turnover yeah. you know what i mean yeah. as, as sad as it is to say that and then at the same time it's like um do you want to live forever you know like uh, if you were given the choice in a certain form not 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 here you know what i mean i i do i do i have the desire to be eternal but not in this vessel not you know what i mean there i think there's yeah i think there's more you know, I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, we're getting a little, we're getting cussed. <laughs> this is an interesting topic. This could be its own podcast topic, but <laughs> to live forever. Um, but no, I hear you. I don't know if I want to or not, but yeah, at some point I think you would get bored. Well, maybe that's exactly right. right. The, the premise being that what I'm referring to is a, is a, a whole different level of what it is to be. Right. So yeah, uh, so that's a, let's save that for another. That's a very, very that, deep that's one. An interesting yeah, topic to dive like into. It. And not that I plan on going there, but it's just like, man, Okay, I mean, because technology, right, is is advances so fast, and it's it's uh it's on a curve, yeah, right. It's on like a bell curve, uh, from what we see. Yep. And at some point, I don't know. I mean, does at some point it, it can't just keep curving straight up, right? I, at some point, it's got I, to I, sort of I settle so. down. I don't think it ever will. I really don't. I don't because it's in for no other reason. It's not about the capacity of technology itself. It's about the capacity of the human spirit, and we always we, unless yeah. the human changes drastically we're always going to want to create and be better i just i I believe that that's the thing is we want to create and be better but sometimes we create things for the worst i i'm i would venture more often more often than yeah i would it doesn't that's i'm not being a naysayer i'm not being negative i just think more often than not i think we create a lot of things where it's like what we do that for but we get a lot of gems and here's one of them right i am very into what the future looks like uh, around uh, mixed reality, right? Which is a, a blend between mm-hmm. augmented reality and virtual reality, right? Mixed reality is exactly that. It just, it augments your actual world and you can kind of physically interact with the world while also interacting with the the uh, the augmented virtual world, right? Mm-hmm. So the reason I feel passionate about this topic is because I started to play in the space of augmented reality many years ago at, at work because I saw its potential and and what it was going to do from an educational standpoint and from a process standpoint. So I remember back in the day, and this is where, this is years ago. This is when augmented reality was like just starting to become a thing. Virtual reality had made a solid footprint, but augmented reality was was, and just want to be very clear here. Virtual reality is everything you're looking at is synthetic. Everything you're looking at it's, it's, you put it on as soon as you put it on your head, 
there's nothing you're looking at that's real. Augmented reality is when you put it on and it's not even powered on, you just it's like a sheet of glass. Yeah. But it augments your reality. It places things yeah, in like the Yeah, like you could look at a at a blank wall and have it put a TV on the wall. Yeah. Aug, uh, in augmented reality, it's a fake TV, but you could have you could watch TV on a blank wall basically. Yeah, you can watch it on a blank wall, yeah. yeah. And and you can actually and this is I actually I'll admit I get I still get a little confused between the difference between augmented reality and mixed reality, but they're they're pretty synonymous of one another mm -hmm. um but don't hold me to that but uh, a good point is that how it interacts with your real world so where if i was like you have a desk you have a counter behind you um i could look at that counter with augmented reality and it can map that and i could actually create like a a virtual cube and place it on the counter because it will know that there's a counter here so this virtual cube i made it can't be on the ground because there's a counter there but i see that there's a structure yeah. there and if i push it it'll fall off the counter right yeah. it 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 reacts with stuff like that. Okay, so why is why am I bringing this up? Because I started to play in this space, and I was doing a project for work. Uh, many years, I wrote a paper on this, and uh, <clears throat> I did a, a pilot at work where I bent down underneath that we have what's called the subfab, and we have tons of um, um, P. Uh, let's see, PDPs, which are power distribution panels, and PSPs, power supply pan or uh, power. Supply panels and power distribution panels. So the supply is what brings all that in there and the distribution panels distri distribute it among all the tools. Well, sometimes those go down for whatever reason they have to be reset. When they have to be reset, dude, it's not a, oh, just click the button. You, you need to know what you're doing. And yeah. there wa wasn't a whole lot of people that know how to do that. So I was like, okay, that, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fix that problem. I wanna make it so that anybody, anybody can just grab an augmented reality set off the wall, put it on and just go, uh, look and, and, and it get done. So what I did so was it's like a training program in the, it's not even a training program. It's a process program. It's not, you, you, I mean, you're, you end up learning something, but it's not there to teach you. It's there to guide you. Mm -hmm. So what, what I created was, and I, I had to work with a developer on this, but what I created was I, I made a whole storyboard of what I wanted to happen. And you walk up to one of these power distribution panels wearing this and there's a QR code. It recognizes the QR code and it conjures up the program and says, okay, I know what you're trying to do. And it, and it paints all this stuff over the power distribution panel. And it asks you a question. Is it, you know, is it, is it off right now? Sometimes they have to do stuff while it's on. Is it off? And in the air, you can select yes, right? You can select yes. It goes, okay, pull this, pull this lever. Okay, now wait 30 seconds. And I had an animated clock count for 30 seconds, right? Because what a lot of people do is they pull this, they do the next thing. No, 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 you got to let it charge. And they do all this stuff. He, he goes around, it does this whole thing. Okay, now you're going to push this button and all this. You don't need to know anything about electricity and you can bring our systems back up if you're wearing this thing, mm -hmm. right? So I wrote this paper and I, I, uh, I entered it in a contest and I didn't win. And I don't like that. <laughs> I, I win, I win these things. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this sounds crazy, but like I have a history of, I win these things because two, I, I think I'm very imaginative in this field and I think I write very well and I didn't win, but the person who was funding the whole thing, it was, this is very, I'm not going to say her name, but she said, listen, listen, this paper here, I know it didn't place because you're judges or whatever. I don't care. Fund this. And so it was like this, listen, you didn't win, but you're going to get your funding for this. I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, she sees a lot of promise in this. So I got all my funding for it. Next thing you know, I'm off to the races. I got this pilot going and it's, it's awesome. It was this awesome thing. I got shut down a lot, but back <laughs> then the first virtual reality one I had, it was like a giant, I'm Dubro, like a beach ball on my head. Yeah. And now I've got to combat all the questions. They're like, well, this thing's way too big. I'm like, no, it's going to get smaller. And they're like, and what would this cost? I'm like, this thing's about 30 grand. They're like, what? And they're, <laughs> they're like, that's, we can't afford that. I'm like, it's going to get cheaper too. You know what, you know what our business we work in, right? It's going to get faster and cheaper. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm trying to position us yeah. because augmented reality is going to be a part of, our, of this culture for our competitors. I'm just trying to get us in a place where we have all the process and protocols in line so that we know what we're doing. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, one day we realize our competitors are using this in their everyday lives and we're like, Oh, let's give it a shot. Well, you already lost. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's cool. So I, I, I started to think like when, when we talked about talking about the future, I was like, okay, so there's a couple takes on the future, right? That like, it, and, and we've seen it in cinema a lot because this is a subject that I think that people like to dance in this, this, this area of like trying to predict. And so we made fun of back to the future. Obviously they, 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 they probably needed to say it was another couple hundred years in the future, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. 
But um, and other movies that have done this that I can think of, and one that that you kind of as you're talking about virtual reality, mixed reality, Ready Player One. Oh you know, yeah, well, it was the the book obviously yeah. from a book. So um, you know, obviously there's that take on what virtual reality slash mixed reality could look like in the future. Yeah, and and then you know if you want to just like even dive further into things that have been predicted, um, Wally. Had a very interesting take You're going on way where, out there on where the world could go. Yeah, right. And so, I, as I kind of think about like where do I think, where do I feel things are gonna be, I'm kind of leaning more towards you know, and I guess it depends on how long we're talking. But like, if we're gonna say like 200 years or whatever, then you know, obviously, I'm thinking more Ready Player One. Like that's kind of more the lifestyle like you're talking about. Like mixed reality or, or augmented reality is gonna be. I think very much part of our daily lives. I could I could envision not even having the goggles, like having um, contact. Yes, lenses. I've got, I, you know got that, I, mean? I had that written in my notes. Yeah. Only. Yes, and and would I have a gaming station? You know, to, would I be streaming with three monitors, a keyboard, a mouse? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Because all that would just be I would I you don't need monitors. Your monitors are in your eyes. You yeah. know what I mean? They're being augmented in front of you. Even your keyboard would be virtual. Like you yeah. can you're you you tapping keys. Keyboards are probably gonna be outdated. There will be a brand new input device. Yeah. Like there, there won't be such thing as a keyboard and mouse. You don't need it. You, you're just gestures and air or whatever are gonna do what you need yeah. to do. So I, I could see that. I, I feel like that's I feel like that's a good a good swing. I think it, it is it's something too. that will most likely come true maybe we'll miss it by a little bit i i i think uh, maybe you might be right we might miss it by a little bit but but here's what i'm gonna i venture that i mean we're really digging into augmented reality right now and i think that's great i think like cars the windshield's gonna be smart glass and so what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna be driving and are you gonna be driving you okay that's i have autonomous cars. driving that's another piece on yeah. here okay i have autonomous driving on here too um, but in, in terms of, I, it, let's say it is autonomous driving and you're not in control, you're still going to have the ability to make decisions. You're, you can change your mind on where right. you want to go and stuff. But let's say you go to change your mind or whatever, even if it's autonomous driving, it's going to be like, yeah, not only is there a wreck up here, it's exactly 1,746 feet ahead of us. And we're going to go ahead and move you over to the left lane. There's going to be a big old beacon in the air. That's going to like point down. The whole world's going to be augmented. Mm -hmm. This, I had this thought forever ago. It's that's kind of, it's like Waze. I don't know if you ever played with Waze. It's like, it's like Google Maps, yeah. but it's Waze. And it's like the, the, the amount of items they have on there. Like you can, you know, when a, when there's a car wreck coming up and what side of the road it's on, you know, if there's a, a cop, that's a, a speed trap. In do you think, do you think we haven't solved wreckages? wreckages like cars getting in wrecks you think oh very you, good okay you, you don't um, think like a tree we, fell over we how about have, that okay yeah okay, yeah. Natu yeah natural disasters happen yeah. i was gonna say i would think that we would be smart enough that that yeah we figure out as long as everybody's autonomous driving you know and there's well, no people actually behind the wheel then then the the systems should work in a way to avoid car wrecks in the beginning right i agree so that's so for the longest time I'm, I'm really, a lot of people are against autonomous driving. I'm, I'm not, I I'm very behind the idea of autonomous driving. It's going to be a mess at first, but for the longest time, I thought the number one reason we were going to be held up was because wasn't because of the technology of the car or the cameras, right. Or the company Eagle Eye. It's, it had nothing to do with that. It's because the roads themselves don't have the infrastructure for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you don't necessarily need the infrastructure for it. The infrastructure for it has the capacity to make it much better if you've got the whole thing is sensors underneath the the ground or whatever. But the cars that are doing autonomous driving today are literally just leveraging their cameras to do right. it. That's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. I I just went and got sushi with my team the other day, and my drink was delivered to me by a robot. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I looked at this thing, and, and I'm like, I know it's not that complicated. I mean, I owned a Roomba. I know what these things are doing or whatever, but. This is still they have them impressive. driving around campus at my son's college yep. where you could order food and like it, a, a robot just like drives down the sidewalk and up to the, the dorm and delivers the food. Yep. 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 <laughs> it, like it's, it's happening. Like things are, things are already happening. I mean now, and then fast forward like 200 years from now, like that stuff's going to be perfected and, yep. and just like a part of everybody's life daily. And now here's, 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 I, I don't really love this next piece. Let's go back to the contact lenses. I absolutely believe that's going to be a thing. Contact lenses or really loose fitting glasses or whatever. Um, <clears throat> let's just say it's contact lenses. Let's go with that. 
Uh, and then now let's start to talk about the social aspect of that. You and I stream. We share our lives with pe- with people, with strangers. We do. Yeah. We all the time. There's uh, there's a lot of names I see. I recognize these names, and I see names that I don't recognize. They're, <clears throat> they're finding me for the first time, right? You and I play in the field of what it is to share part of our lives. In the future, when they have these contacts, people are going to leave them in. You're going to subscribe to that person, not their online handle, which they can make an online handle, but you're, you're subscribing to their life. And you're, they're just going to, you're going to be able to see whatever they see at any given time based on how, how much they want to open up their lives. But there's going to be people out there that are like, you want the, the platinum package? It's everything. You get to, you get, uh, when I'm taking a shower, when I'm taking, <laughs> you're going to say something else. When I'm taking a shit, it's going to be <laughs> like, like uh, this, uh, I, I'm yeah. not, I'm not into this idea, but you, I would say you watch, we might be long gone. I don't, I think. In our lifetime, I can see that happening. It's gonna happen. I, you know what? I might be delusional. It might be happening right now, yeah. like with a GoPro or something, right? But I think that, like the the idea of sharing your entire everything with the ether is going to be a commodity. Yeah, I mean, it, it's already like there's it's it's already kind of like human nature to want to be uh, like watching other people was it voyeurism, yeah. right? Uh, because look at how popular, you know, shows like Big Brother are where there's all these strangers yeah. trapped in a house and there's 24 seven live feed cameras. And and that part of the show is very popular. Like there are people that literally will just watch these contestants sleep all night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Through these live feeds. And it's like, OK, OK, that's a little weird. We had, uh, you know, the Truman Show uh, movie way back when that kind of like went down that realm too of what would it be like to just always be watched, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, so I think that, I think that probably if given the ability through technology, like, like these lenses or like, even like you said today, we could do it. We could strap on a, on a GoPro and just make sure it's constantly streaming and, right. and you could share that. And then there would be people out there that would be into that, you know? Right. Wanna, wanna but see you're what dealing, you're like dealing with else. battery, you're dealing with, uh, you know, coverage yeah. as, as all of this improves and they get it down to, I mean, it's probably going to be, the motion of your eye is going to need be all the what the contact needs to stay charged or whatever, and now it's just in there. And if you're part of the gold package, you get 15 minutes of my life a day. If you're, you're part of platinum, you you get it all. It costs this much. And now, I mean, somebody literally, dude, the future is going to be people being like, not what do I want to do today? Who do I want to be today? Who do I want to be yeah. today? Just living vicariously through someone yes, else. Yes, dude. Yes. That's, and and I, can I see that being popular. I, sad. I, very I, sad. I don't like it. I don't like that idea. And I don't know why. I can't quite articulate why. But in a way, that's kind of what they were doing in Ready Player One, because they would go in and have avatars and basically be whoever they wanted. Right? Yeah. But they were in control of that avatar right, right. here. It's just at the surrender yeah, of whatever I'm looking yeah, at. You're being yeah. taken on a, on a ride. You're taking on, you're taking on a ride that is the life of somebody else yeah. entirely. Right. And so, and, and you know what? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to make of that one. That, that might be real. It might not be, I don't know. Well, I mean, see. yeah, it's scary to think that that could be a thing, but like today it's happening. Like things are happening that are scary, right? AI, AI is scaring the the crap out of a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, in, apparently, including the person that like invented AI. He's like, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if this is a good idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if if we want to talk about that, I personally think AI will not be stopped. You know, I think it's just going to continue to evolve, and I think AI will inevitably inevitably be part of everyday life. Like there will be. Uh, there will be a lot being done by AI that we used to do. Yeah. And I think that's just going to become, it's going to become normalized. I don't know if it's going to get out of control like everybody's worried about, but I do think that at some point uh, we will be dealing with it uh, even more so than we are today. I found out yesterday in, in talking to some other creators that uh, there are already YouTubers who have gone full AI. So there's a YouTuber I'm not going to mention names because I want people looking it up, but there's a YouTuber who has, who does Minecraft content, who has replaced himself 100% with AI. What? Yeah. AI is writing his scripts. Uh, They are editing. They are, uh, he did uh, voice training. So when the AI reads the script, it's in his voice, sounds exactly like he voiceovered the recording. It's it's I think I think there are people involved as far as controlling his Minecraft character, but he's 100 percent hands off. He doesn't he's not making his own videos anymore. It's AI and like a uh, like an editor or something that is amazing. That's, that's making his videos. It, 
Like, can you believe that? Uh, like, and, and that's today. That's yeah. happening right now. <laughs> and AI literally just started getting to be a thing. You know, I mean, it's probably it's been around for a while, but you know what I mean? Like it's starting to take off just recently. Yeah. So if you think about how fast that ramped and now fast forward to a hundred years, yeah, like it's definitely going to be yeah. a huge part of our lives. And, and I think it's something that as scary as it is, we better start thinking of how to get ahead of it. You know what I mean? Like, like either how to leverage it or how to make sure it doesn't go too far. Because right. We suck right. at human, human, humans suck at like, like understanding the detriment of the, the technologies we create, right? Like, is, yeah. I, I mean, when when I first saw the first ad for an iPhone, did I think I was going to have social media addicted teenagers that literally could not put their phones down without getting anxiety? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's the kind of stuff we're dealing with now to where um, technology is like giving everybody these dopamine hits and they can't even like put it down. Yeah. It, you know, yep. and, and it's like, okay, great. Now we've created it, it, new issues that we never saw coming. Imagine what's going to happen with AI. Yeah. You know? Yep. Well, so do you, are you familiar with Boston Dynamics? Yeah. You know, the company is. So yeah. they came out to our work a couple months ago to do a demonstration. Um, I, I, they, uh, they, uh, they've got they, that really they, cool, like robot dog, right? Yes. That's yeah. the spot. And that's yeah. who they brought. They brought spot. Nice. And, um, I was, I was asked to, to join the demonstration. I couldn't make it, but I was asked to be there. I was like, God, oh, I want to see that, you know? Yeah. And this is the dog that, uh, you can like you, if you try to push it over, it'll catch itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, the video of this dog, like walking on ice and slipping and, and regaining its balance is very, very impressive. And uh, it can carry large loads. It's got, you know, it's built with all these cameras and everything. And the premise being that uh, we might entertain doing a pilot where this thing is um, inside our factory. Um, and all it really does is just report back gauges, right? Just goes and reads gauges and reports mm. it back. So we don't need people traveling miles a day to look at all these gauges and everything. And uh, it's going to, it's, I, I've been in this game a while. I know what it is to implement stuff in the factory. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying it's likely, likely not going to happen uh, at least anytime soon. Uh, and so I'm doing projects that are centered around that same thing, but it's different, right? I'm doing IOT stuff where I use all these different types of sensors to get the people, the information that they need. But now they're talking. So one of my projects is there's a, there's these gauges way up high in the air and they got to bring somebody over to look at those gauges and mark them down. Cause they're not smart gauges. All they do is report what's going on with that tool. Um, so I'm working with somebody to put some, um, just to put some pressure lines on it and just report it back. It's, I don't want to talk about the boring stuff, but somebody's like, well, they're talking about this dog spot coming and looking at the gauges and reporting. And I'm like, that'll be 15 years. So I'm going to carry on with my project. You know what <laughs> I mean? I was like, I know how this works. Like, that's going to take way too long. I mean, it'll, it might happen, but, but think about this. When you, when the dog is pushed, it catches itself. How it's the gyros and everything, all the imbalances. And it does the very, very quick math to catch itself. It's programmed to catch itself. What, what, what happens when catch itself changes or evolves because it has AI? I don't even know if this dog has AI. I have no idea. But what if, what if, what if it's the AI is written in a fashion of just when something is going not as planned, right the ship? Well, what if you leave it, the dog to interpret that and somebody like pushes it or bumps it or kicks it and it sees that thing as a threat? I mean, I'm getting right. way over the top here, but I'm not being that over the top. You know what I mean? Like this, I'm with you. The, the, AI, the AI, AI thing's got me a little twisted. Yeah. <laughs> well, the word. other thing is be, because we can go there with like the fear piece. Yeah. It's then been leveraged in media and entertainment yep. to push that to push that narrative too. Yep. Uh, I Robot, Will Smith, right? Dude, Terminator. Yeah. When, 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 yeah. When, nobody knew what AI was. I don't even know if it was. Who was talking about AI back in the 80s, bro? Right. You know what I mean? And, and so, yeah. like, we've already seen all the doomsday yeah. stuff. Yeah. And now as it actually is happening around us, like, that's where our brains go. Yeah. Like, can we actually control this? Right. You know? Like, right. I don't know. We're humans. Yeah. We're not flawless. No. <laughs> you know? No, we're not. We, we can't see the future. I mean, even though we're trying to see the future right now with this podcast, like, like we can't actually know what's going to happen. And shoot. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Yeah. I don't want to think that way. I don't like thinking in, in that that light because you could really go down a dark spiral as you as you think like, oh, man, OK, AI could be the end of humanity. They could. Yeah, <laughs> they I could, mean, you know, you know, that it always is the kind of the same story where AI, the computers scorch the earth like that's It's yeah. always been that thing. Yeah. That, 
And, and I mean, the Matrix took it to a really fascinating level where they turned humans into batteries. I thought that was cool. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I could be way off base here. Like, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. And I don't know why I think that. I, I, I just I just don't. I, hopefully, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. I just, I'm not trying to be like, I don't, I refuse to believe it could because I know for a fact it could, but I just don't think it, it will yeah. come to well, that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do, uh, as, as humans, we, we, we tend to fear for the, the worst case scenarios, right? right? Like, I mean, think about um, the year 2000. We all thought no, like y- every Y2K. single electronic device was going to explode when yeah. the clock struck midnight. Or yeah. something. You know, like people went to. And if you're the- younger than 23, what we're talking about quite literally is in the year 1999, the number one fear was that when 2000 rolled over, all these computer systems that were based on uh, like uh, uh, all their they were their threshold was 1999 because they were right. written so long before. Oh, I'm not. I'll worry about it later. And like oh, all these systems are going to fail. Yeah. That that was the fear. Yeah, we thought like every like the internet was going to go down and like yeah. every everything was. And, and you know what? It was all good. It, it was, was fine. totally fine. Well, you want to know what's interesting is I was watching. Um, you know, you like to watch either the ball drop or you know mm-hmm. in New York. Uh, on New Year's Eve, and I was at a buddy's house. We're like, this is it. This is the end of the world. Just joking around, you know. And I think we were watching the events in Chicago or something like, or the, the, you know, the new year turn in Chicago or something. I don't quite remember. And I'm not joking, dude. We're watching is three, two, one. And it just goes off. It just, just the, the feed is killed and we're all, Oh, is this, is this real? Like, <laughs> like we're like, is that real? And then it was like a minute later, everything came back and one guy's all, I'm not going to lie guys. I was kind of scared there. You know what I mean? Because all this hype got built up, and then yeah. boom! I was like, "Did that really just happen?" It was probably just some prankster, like uh, yeah. unplug you. Know yeah, I mean? exactly. <laughs> like that's that's a funny prank to play. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's just like get everybody feared for their lives. Yeah, hilarious. So, <laughs> here's what I'm gonna say. Here's another thing I think is gonna happen. I think um, we're we keep talking about the technology uh, evolving and what new technology we're gonna have. Let's talk about the human reaction to it. So I think that privacy is going to be huge, hugely valuable because even today it doesn't really exist anymore. Right. right? And uh, tomorrow it's going to be the, like quite literally no such thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is like right now, you know, we make all these notions to try to keep our lives private and our names private or whatever. If anybody does a little bit of digging, that's they're going to find it. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. That's yeah. today. Tomorrow they're going to tune in. And the whatever app they're watching on will just to the facial everything. recognition to yeah. everything they want, yeah. everything they want to know. So to that end, I think a couple different things are going to happen. I believe you're going to see uh, businesses start up that are centered around the idea of having privacy, if only for a moment. For example, uh, a club called Unplugged. And when you go inside, literally there's zero coverage. All devices are like rendered useless mm. inside that place. When you go in there, you can actually go be a human again. When you leave, you're back on the grid. But when you're inside this place, it's like you're on an island. You know what I mean? It'll yeah. be a big old club that's got the music and the fun and the drinks. And when you walk in, that's it. Yeah. That's it. So you're aware that your phone's not going to ring all this or whatever. And now those clubs will be huge because, sure. I mean, we, we spent we're all this time trying to get connected and just to get us to a place where we're just going to want to disconnect. Yeah. You know, it's just too much. Yeah. Like I, I keep bringing up movies because like movies, I think have done a really good job of, of, of like these kind of talks. And, uh, do you remember minority report? I do. So do you remember when, uh, well, he was trying to hide at, you know, cause he was being, uh, hunted down by the, by the cops or whatever. But like everywhere he went, they, he was getting retina scanned yep. and it was like bringing up all this information about him and, and his shopping habits. And it was, it was for advertisement purposes. Yep. Right. And we deal with that today. We deal with that today. Like anytime, anytime I'm going to buy something or I'm looking, thinking about buying something like maybe I'm, maybe I need a, a new USB thumb drive or something. Right. And I, I do a quick little search on Amazon. I'm looking for whatever, uh, within minutes, my wife's like, so you looking for a USB thumb drive? Because she's getting ads on her phone all of a sudden, <laughs> right? Because everything's all connected, yeah, right. And so I was like, oh, you know, ad for ExpressVPN. Insert here, no. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's like, yes, like that kind of thing is going to continue because there's money 
right involved and, and they're going to be pushing that stuff but like having all that information about you just readily available even more so than today because people could do uh search us and find wikis and stuff mm -hmm. that t talks about our age and and our or who we're married to and all that stuff like it's out there already like people love information which is fine but you're, you're right like at a certain point you're going to just crave that um that privacy yeah and and to be able to like cut off i didn't think of that like oh man we actually paid to, to have our phone taken away right like. right <laughs> but more than that dude i think there's going to be entire corporations spun up around the idea I, I, now i want to start a business in the future called mulligan to where after so much time has gone by it's like okay i, I have to scrub clean i don't i, I want to start over give me a new name yeah. give me a new identity scrub everything Whoa. about the old one and you're it's going to be like the ultimate haircut was it um was it black mirror where they had the, the bit where uh you could walk up to somebody and they had like a, a rating was it was, yes dude yeah. yes yeah. so imagine that right like we're we got the contacts in you, and you walk up to somebody and you're 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 about to like meet somebody on the whatever subway or whatever yeah. and and your your mixed reality is showing you that that person is a three star person yeah yeah you know out of five or whatever yeah <laughs> and it's like could you imagine that that definitely been like oh man i i guess i suck because i have three stars i should probably get a mulligan and start Dude. over <laughs> can you erase my stats <laughs> bro there so that's it said that i i love this i love this talk i love this talk and th so black mirror is something i don't know if i told you this i think i've even mentioned it on the podcast before but black mirror is something that i i i i, I was so intrigued by the quality and the creativeness uh, of their product that i looked up the company i wanted to learn more about the writers and everything and their motto is we will always do the best we can. I, I hope I don't butcher this. We will always do the best we can to show you where we're at and where we're going. And they didn't mean them. They meant mankind. Mm. And they're talking about like, we have a lot of flaws today because technology is, uh, it is evolving faster than our ability to learn it, which mm -hmm. is, to, which is why like we've talked about, this is why the social media thing is, is so detrimental because it's the blind leading the blind. You have the biggest users of social media, the kids uh, who are being led by the parents who didn't have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's just like nobody knows. And all we can do is use our instinct and say, that doesn't feel right. Well, now these kids that are dealing with them, they're watching like there's a lot of terrible things. Uh, they're going to become parents and they're gonna be like, no, no, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Much yes. better than we were. They're going to be much better. At, like enforcing screen That's time correct. and, and, yeah. uh, and probably having like a better handle on what's being consumed. Yeah. Right. Like there is, there is decent companies out there today. Uh, Bark is, is one of them that we use with our kids that, Basically, you put it on all their devices and it monitors what they're doing. And if they get a text from somebody or a, a private message in Discord or whatever that has some language that could seem bully, like like they're getting bullied, then we get notified. And it's like mm. and we see it like, oh, my gosh, this person is like saying very mean things to you. Let's let's talk about how to how to handle that. Let's talk yeah. about blocking them or or you know, letting them know that's not cool or whatever. You can start to have those conversations, but you literally have to, at that point, spy on the privacy yeah. of your kids. And that's where, that's where as a parent, it became a bit of a struggle because um, from the kid's side, I could see why they would not want this on their device, watching everything they're doing. Yeah. And as a parent, I could see why we felt it necessary to do that so that they couldn't get themselves in dangers that we could have never fathomed. Right. Right. And so it's a it's it's a very big challenge, like you said. Like we don't have a handle on it, no. and that's that's the big question for me. Is in the future, does it continue to get away from mankind, or do we get a handle on it? Right. And that's where I literally don't have the answer. I don't know which direction we're hand. We're yeah, heading with that. I don't know. And I think that whole thing has got me thinking. I mean, I I also think along the lines of I think we're losing a lot of who we are as humans because of, um people are putting so much stock into the things that they read or see or, or hear on. It's like, that was a, that was a three and a half second clip and you've just made up your entire decision on this. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm seeing it all the time. It's just like, yeah. what, what, what are you doing? Do some thinking, think a little bit, dig a little bit. And unfortunately when you do that, you, you could dig up more crap. That's also a bunch of lies, yeah. but, and that's, that's a part that sucks. Right. But people are, um, they're, 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 they're not, you, I feel like people, a lot of people are using their brains less. 
You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. And I think it's just going to continue to get worse until the world's just sort of had enough and said, okay, I'm just going to, I don't, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> I don't believe anything. Yeah. Black Mirror did an episode. I'm just going to give this, I'm going to say the word spoiler. Okay. Cause this is an episode. I hope I'm going to try not to ruin the whole thing. Um, but essentially there's this, uh, this guy, the, 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 the bee population has gotten um, really dwindled. So what they've done is they've, they've created these bees, little robot bees to spread pollen because we need bees, man. And it's just swarms of these bees in these big old bee farms where they make these little robot things. And uh, it's, very, it's really fascinating, too. And they, uh, they get hacked. These swarms end up getting hacked. And this is what this guy does, dude. This guy hacks these swarms. Spoiler, I'm telling you right now, so I, I apologize. And I, I, I'm so sorry, but I, this is what this is driving the point, the point home. He hacks these swarms, and then he, he marries these swarms with um, internet clout and people who are trending down and are trending in a negative way. So somebody on the on like somebody was captured in a video doing something bad. It's like a five second clip, and the whole world's been thumb you know thumbs down, thumbs down. This person sucks. They don't know this person, but the whole world feels like this person's terrible. And the bees go and they they kill the person right because they can they're they're mobile. And this guy wrote this program where the, these bees go go do this. It's very haunting. And he, what he's this at least what I got from it was like this is this is what the the. This is what you want. This is what you're doing to these people. Somebody, yeah. somebody's a human for two seconds, and you cancel them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. So uh, in, go ahead, in go their ahead. Case, literally, cancel actually them, cancel yeah. them now. You know what I mean? Like that's what I was getting from this show. And I, maybe I'm getting the wrong message, but that's what it felt like. Like, like people let people be human. Let people make mistakes, man. Yeah. Or 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 shocking concept. Let people have thoughts that you don't agree with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And don't don't cancel them. Don't try to end them. And this show was quite literally ending them, leveraging these swarms. It was very fascinating. Wow. But that's I, what this show does, dude. I haven't seen that one. I yeah. want to watch it now. It's you didn't good. spoil it. Now I want to watch it. Even yeah, more. I didn't. I didn't spoil it because there's yeah. so much. Yeah, you know, there's so much more that unfolds. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we get it figured out. You know, hopefully we can. Hopefully AI is something that that we can leverage as a good. Yeah. You know, hopefully mixed reality is something that that's very very helpful i mean i like the idea of like like not having three monitors and just having it projected like like that's, <laughs> that seems very cool yeah. you know even the idea of of going ready player one and, and being an avatar in a virtual world i mean think about how much better uh gaming i do it today be. i play like, poker as an avatar yeah. I, put on, I put on my yeah, headset you've talked to me about like because yeah. I, I do have a vr headset but I, I just couldn't get into it for whatever reason yeah. and you've talked to me about like you put your vr headset on and it's like you're actually sitting at a poker table and you're talking to strangers yes and you're you're smoking fake cigars yeah. and chewing bubble gum and blowing bubbles in a virtual real world that doesn't exist yep. and that just blows me away that that you can like feel like you're you're actually there and that's with today's it's technology. insane i i sat there and i got a, a, a it was all virtual and i got a cigar and i held it up like this. all i did was hold it up to my mouth and this guy next to me saw me doing it and this this hand comes up with a zippo and lights it for me i'm like thanks man like it's like no i'm not even joking and one guy's in one guy was playing with something like at the other end of the table and i was like what is that He's like, oh, it's this new top I just bought. You buy it with like, you know, points or whatever. It's this new top I just bought. And I'm like, is that actually spinning? Or I don't remember what it was. He goes, yeah. And he just throws it across the table and I play with it and I do this. And I'm like, that is pretty cool. And I throw it back to him. Another guy's a boomerang. He's just throwing around. And <laughs> it, it's insane. It's That's insane. Wild. And and there's a social aspect to that, too, because it's there's there is computer muscle. You know what I mean? And and so where people like there's people feel like, oh, I'm safe here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and I kind of, it's like, okay, so you are, what now you don't have to make the right yeah. decisions or not be so a shitty person. The, so then like now that, now that you can act however you want to act and there's nobody like stopping you yeah. or, or, or a, a fear of actually getting punched in the face by, because you're being a jerk. Yeah. That's your, that's your first go-to is like, yay, I get to be a jerk. Yeah. I'm going to be a jerk. Yeah. Guess what? You're just a jerk. You're just a jerk. Yeah, like, like that's Yeah, that's all, all it did was give you a safe environment to be who you really are. And it was so funny. I was at this table, and there was a bunch of us. And I will tell you this. 99.999% uh, of the time, it's just nothing but great vibes, right, when I do this. And at one point, and a lot of the, for a lot of these people, they get to socialize in this aspect that they maybe might be a little nervous to 
you know, otherwise, which is, I, that's what, it, that's fine. That's not my business, but you're comfortable here. Good. Be comfortable. And one girl, uh, she just started, I don't know what happened, but she started um, singing and I, she thought she was muted. And I was like, Hey, you had a pretty good voice. And she's like, Oh, I'm guys. I'm sorry. I thought I was muted. And we're like, no, I'll keep going. And then, and so she kind of did. I'm like, and I could tell she was now she's really holding back. Yeah. And I said, why don't you just go? You know what I mean? So then she just starts singing, dude. And it was beautiful. And we were like, and nobody said a word. Like we weren't even like all the cards stopped and we just sat there and her avatar, it's her voice, her actual voice. And we're sitting there and everybody busted out their Zippos and we started doing this with the lighters, you know, it was like so silly, but it was so great because it was like we were communicating on this level. So now we have this like vibe, you know what I mean? And and one of them, um, one, one was this, he was actually like a younger kid. And when we picked up, we heard his voice and like, we just all learned like instantly, like, okay, keep it together. Like we got a kid here, you know what I mean? Be yeah. cool. And uh, so now he was in, and he was actually a pretty good player and we we're playing and we're having fun. And then somebody else joins and this kid says something and this dude just starts going at him. Like it was interesting. I don't know what got over this guy. He just starts like trying to insult him and stuff. And I can't do anything. It's all virtual, right. but I'm I, all I did was all, I said, Hey, don't do that. And everybody else is like, yeah, don't do that. That's not welcome here. He's like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And he stopped. And wow. I was like, that was a, gr that was cool. I enjoyed that moment. But what you can also do, is when somebody is acting up, you can just straight up bust out your remote mute. You can actually mute. Like I, that, that might be my favorite feature, dude. It's like you go like this, you go like this, and their whole their whole avatar just goes boom and goes into this generic avatar where it, it's like got like tape over its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I haven't done it in like a year. I got to get back at it. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, and that's today's technology. That's crazy. So yeah, I mean, just thinking forward, it's like you know maybe maybe Ready Player One was was more like okay. Like that Ready Player One stuff that was happening, maybe just, that might be in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like based off of what you're telling me you've experienced with VR, like what was happening in Ready Player One, that could be, you know, not saying like they're going to have the the IOI, you know, <laughs> evil corporation, you know, or right. anything like that. But as far as like that kind of virtual reality sure. world that you can, you can fully escape to. Yeah. And the thing is, then we start getting in the space of, moving humanity towards the Wally -E scenario, right? <laughs> so now you're spending all day potentially in a in a different space, right. in a virtual reality, because you're you're maybe not happy with your own real reality. Right. Um, and so now you're spending all your time there and maybe we don't have the the treadmill machines and stuff like 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 Ready Flare One. So you're just sitting there with your VR hours on end every day yeah which can't possibly be like super healthy right like we we do it anyway right with just regular gaming sure. we don't get enough exercise of course. it's the reason why i got a stand-up desk is to try to at least get something yeah. you know out, out of gaming and from a physical standpoint but like imagine humanity gets sucked in so hard that like no more no more going outside right no more no more you know sports no more exercise and and we start going in that direction where like in Wally, -E, like they had made life so easy that they didn't even they didn't have to walk anymore, right? <laughs> like they were just in their little hover chairs. It terrible. And, and it got to the point to where they like got so big they couldn't even hardly walk when they had to. Yeah. You know, like we we could potentially slip into that because humans are always looking to make things easier yep. on ourselves. And what if we made things so easy that it's to our own detriment? health I like we're doing that we're doing that already like we're doing it already right? yep so i but here's the thing i my i you know i work my job people ask me what i do and i tell them i do iot i do i run programs for iot and i explain what iot is and i explain how this works and blah 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 but at the end of the day other than i, I went into the factory that's extremely rare at the end of the day you know what i do for my job many several several hours a day which they pay me well for email that's my job. Email. Like, are you kidding me? Hmm. I do email. And I, and I'm starting to branch out now. I'm doing a lot more I like got, Unix I, I got it stuff. all figured out, dude. I know how to do this. AI. We're going to have AI do your emails for you. Yeah, yeah. And then you can you can spend more time making videos. Let's I'm gonna go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Figured it out. Yeah, I do. I do email. I, I pose questions and I answer questions and I set direction and I set requirements and I check on those requirements and then, then I get on meetings and I, I, and we talk about that last email and then we talk about new stuff and I say, you know what, let me get back to you on now. I'll send you an email. Like, it's like, that's what I, that, and it, 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 I tell you what, man, I am, I will go in there. I'm like, you know what, before I go down and get coffee, it's like six, six thirty in the morning, I'm going to go get started because I don't want to stream later. 
and I'm just going to get going here and I'm, and I go, I go blink and I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. I have not left my office. I have to get up and I have to, let's get up, please. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Move around. So, but I, it's happening now. You know what I mean? It's, it's happening now. And I, I hate it. Yeah. I I hate that. Yeah. We got to be careful. Right. Because in, in this like journey to try to make everything easier on ourselves Mm -hmm. like we're it's to our own detriment in a lot of ways so it is like that's where i don't know i feel like the it's a it's a pendulum right Mm -hmm. like there's a there's a constantly swinging pendulum and as it swings to the left to where everything is getting easier uh we feel something happened pain painful wise like and we realized that was a misstep okay. and then now course we got to start yeah now we got to course correct and because we're humans it always overcorrects Weird. and swings all yeah. the way to the other side <laughs> yeah. and then more pain and realization that whoops uh we went too far yep. and then we overcorrect again and overcorrect again and it's like this pendulum going back and forth you know um what was that what was that saying that that uh you like to say that you or you said before it's about uh the Jurassic Park. No, it's about like uh when you make things easier, when when you make things so easy, oh, it, that's, it, yeah, creates, that's, uh, it creates a bit of softness in humanity, right? And that's what we're talking about. Like if we make our lives so easy, we become soft. That's it, right? it's 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 exactly this. Hard times make hard men, hard men make soft times, soft times make soft men, soft men make hard times. Right. And it's just a cyclical and that's what it thing. Is, a cyclical, yeah. it's yeah, not my, it's, I heard it from Joe Rogan and he heard it from somebody else. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so it's, like, it's that pendulum in a way. It's sick, That one's cyclical, yeah. but it, it is that same idea that yep. like, okay, we made it easy and now we got soft. So now life gets hard and now we have to swing back the other way. So to we got to get hard to, yeah, to exactly, write the ship. Exactly. And now so, we, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I guess I buy into that a little bit that that's the case because we are, we are seeing that, Yeah, you know, we're seeing that with the direction of, of humanity. And I just like, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, you know, I, I always try to try have that optimism in, in humanity that there's there's uh there, there's like seven billion people now or whatever. Uh, what is it? Billion, seven point eight billion. I said in our last one or two podcasts ago, I was talking about how who cared about your 39th yeah. place. And I said I said seven point two billion. And when I watched it back, I'm all I wonder how close I was, and it was seven point eight eight so billion. Up, yeah. So there's seven point eight whatever billion people in the world. You would hope, you would hope there's enough people that are smart enough to figure out how to make sure we don't have massive missteps, yeah. you know, but then again, uh, there's also a, a lot of, a lot of not smart people. There that are is, outnumbering. but there's, there, I agree with you, man, but there's also, you have to, th- this, this is the weird thing about <sighs> stopping disaster is that it, nobody ever knows it happened. They only know when the disaster happened. Right. You know what I mean? Like that, that's it. They, nobody knows when, it, you know, when there's pro, there's crisis is likely averted every day by bodies of brilliant minded people. And you're just, you're never going to hear about it, right. you know? And the, so I'm sure it's been stopped several times. I, I could be wrong, but I, I, I bet yeah. it has. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. One more for you. Okay. Let's talk transportation. And I don't mean autonomous driving. I think that transportation is going to get better. I believe it is possible to get to Japan in 30 minutes. You know what I mean? In the future. Maybe okay. now, maybe now, but, but right now you want to get to Japan. That's an all day excursion. Are you talking like shot into space and could, back down? Cause that, be. that, that already is becoming a thing. It's all, it's already becoming a yeah. thing. I'm also talking about, so, um, which one was it? I, you know, it's so, so here's the thing about Dan Brown, right? I, I, we talked about this with my tattoo and the, you know, uh, Dan Brown, that that dude, that author does his homework, right? And so there's a character called Robert Langdon, who's ma- the main character in all the books. And I, I am failing to recall what book this was. I feel like this was Deception Point. I don't quite remember. It's a long time ago I read it. The thing about Dan Brown is that when he's talking about stuff that's technology-based, it's always so far-fetched, but it's not because it exists, right? So it was this mm-hmm. book was this was an older book, and he was talking in in angels and demons is when he was talking about uh, a particle accelerator. It's actually a particle collider that is underneath, uh, I think Sweden or something. And it is a massive tube dude that when you're in it, it actually looks like a straight line. That's how slow it curves. And it takes like miles and miles, 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 you know, goes underground to collide these particles. Well, I ended up, I was like, what a crazy idea. And then I looked up and it's a thing. It exists. (laughs) Right. And I'm like, Whoa. And it has existed for a long time. Well, at one point in the book, that since Dan Brown writes about this, when he's 
reading when he's when I'm reading about some sort of technology, I'm like, I have to entertain that this might be real, you know. And uh, there's uh, Robert Langdon is picked up, and they said we want to take you to um, I don't remember Geneva, if I'm not mistaken. And he's like, well, I don't have that kind of time. They're like, it'll take 30 minutes. And uh, I, I, I don't even think that's right what I just said. But they, they want to take him somewhere. That can't be right. That might be. I have to read this book again. Anyways, he's thinking they're talking about a place that's literally 30 minutes away. But no, they, they're, he's, they're talking about that on the other side of the world. And he's like, 30 minutes? And they take him in this plane and they go into like almost in space. It's a plane. Right. They just go so unbelievably high that the speeds that they reach are ridiculous ridiculous and they're likely going against the earth's rotation whatever Mm -hmm. and sure enough he's on the other side of the planet in 30 minutes so it if dan brown was writing about that i mean i have to entertain it might be real right the 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 particle accelerator was was real i have to entertain it might be so to that end what's our response to it that tells me that your scope of what you have to offer the world has been widened greatly yeah. Right. What if there's a TwitchCon in Japan? Well, we can no, go. We can go. Yeah. We can go like this. We can go and come back later that day if we wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Like it opens up so much. It also means I believe that your your competition also got fiercer. Yeah. Right. Because the people who want whatever you have to offer, whatever the skill set is, um, even though most of it can be done remotely, for the skill sets that cannot be done remotely, now you're competing against a lot more people, not just the people in your region. You know what right. I mean? So it means that for those certain certain now what you have is those certain skill sets, you're going to get the best of the best of the best, yeah. you know? So there's all this, it just, yeah. it unravels all these different possibilities. It's interesting. Cause like the more we move into like more remote stuff, right? Like, like you and I both have experienced working with remote workers on the other side of the world. And it's easy to, to do that. Like, I think that again, a pendulum swing is like, like especially coming out of the pandemic is now more, more people want to get back to the more face to face stuff. So having the ability to make that travel easier yeah. would would definitely open up more opportunity. I think that we would move back into uh, less remote meetings and more like in person meetings if travel was easy, right? And I in, in language too, like you talk about going to Japan. Like right now, you go to Japan. Good luck. Like you're not if you're not you can't speak the language. It's, it's kind of <laughs> tough, right? Yeah. Like like even when uh, I went to the French Polynesian Islands. Because I didn't speak French, it was actually kind of tough to go grocery shopping. Um, but with technology advancing, like you're going to be able to have everything real time translated. Yep. You know, and you can do that now, like Google Translate. You can just like hold your phone up, they say it, and you're like, okay, yeah, cool. You know, and it's then you want to say it back, you can type it in and say it back, or or what? You can even record it and have it like auto do it. Like that's already happening. Yeah. Imagine when all that's in real time without like the 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 need for like clunky devices and stuff, and it's just like. It, we're, we have embedded devices that are just doing that. Like what you're actually hearing because you've got some sort of fancy hearing aid in or whatever yeah. is like they may be speaking Japanese, but you're hearing it in English. And, yeah. and then when you speak back, it's doing the same thing back to them. <laughs> yeah. Like now all of a sudden communication barriers are completely broken down yeah. across the entire world. Yeah. Right. And imagine what we could accomplish then if we were all able to uh, come together, speak the same language per se. And yet we're all from different cultures, different parts of the world. I like, like that. Like that could that could really open up some some interesting advancements in, in humanity. Yep. I was going to say technology, but it, I, humanity, yeah. I think. It would be uh, really cool to see. Go back to transportation. One thing I always, for some reason, always wanted to have happen is, uh, you know you know the like banks? You go to the banks and you have that little like tube thing <laughs> yeah. you put money in? Yeah. I always hoped that we would get to a place in the, world, <laughs> in the future to where we would have like underground like kind of like lunge tubes or whatever, yeah. like those tubes yeah. that like you could just get in a little tube and it just sucks you across <laughs> the world underground, <laughs> like at a super fast speed. I just, it's probably not reasonable to think that would be a thing. Although I, I guess Elon had his tunnel bore company. Yeah. So maybe he was doing that. I don't know, but uh, imagine that's a thing. Like you go, you go down, you like have a basement under your house and then you can just like select the destination and it knows oh. through the series of like these suction tubes. Just how to route there, you there. Dude. That right? would be amazing. And it's just like, zoop, and you're like <laughs> next thing you know, you're in your friend's basement who lives across the country. Your daughter's, uh, oh. You can visit your daughter in a blink of an eye. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be insane. She could come home every weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take it. So I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get there. Probably not with the the underground tubes though. I think yeah. uh, flying is probably I'm, still the better way to go. Yeah, but what is that going to look like? I and I think 
I I wrote uh, we got I I wrote a paper about leveraging. Um, actually, I'm going to say this out loud. T- just take my idea and make it real. I wrote a paper about leveraging uh, drone hives uh, to combat fi- um, fires, fi- forest fires. Mm-hmm. And my idea here was that, like, I I don't the forest fires. I don't. Well, how can we not get this under control? And so I interviewed a guy who was charge of Arizona uh, wildlands as a firefighter. He's like a firefighter for like 35 years or whatever. And I took him to lunch to ask him some questions. And I kind of pitched my idea to him to get his thoughts on, is this, would this be helpful? I learned some really interesting things. And one of my questions I had for him was once you guys hear about a fire, how big is it? Like I'm talking about middle of a forest. He's like, Oh, it's once we like get notified that there is a fire, it's typically out of control. Because the forest forests are big, mm-hmm. right? He's like it's typically several, several, several acres. So what my paper had was it was supposed to be designed to do uh, both a um, um, proactive thing to where a drone would just kind of fly over high up with some infrared every you know on certain intervals or whatever and report back potential hotspots, right? And meaning if a fire starts for whatever reason uh, in the middle of the forest, it's going to pick up on it when it's the size of a house, not the size of a neighborhood, right? right? And then in that time, it might be at a place where it, there might even be bigger drones that can go maybe even extinguish it. I don't know. But if a fire does get to a point to where it's now got to be combated with, with humans, uh, now we can have assistive. And what we had there was he says that one of the biggest things that they deal with is shift in wind. They're mm-hmm. out there. They think they know what they're doing. And boom, big old shift in wind. And I said, OK, well, what about this? What if what if when you're when you're fighting this fire, I've I've got a, a, a hive of drones above you reporting back real time to where exactly what the fire looks like and where it thinks it's moving. And then miles in every direction, I've got buoy drones that pick up on wind shift. And so I can actually report to you, listen, you have a 15 mile per hour wind coming from the east. It's going to hit you in about three minutes. He's like game changer. Wow. And I'm like, OK, so I wrote a whole paper on that to get the funding for it. And I lost. I couldn't believe it. And the people who I had read it, they're like, there's no way this is not going to win. There's no way. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. no way it, there, it's not going to win. I lost to a dude. I'm still upset. I, <laughs> I lost, can tell. I lost you to a like dude. You're like losing. I get it. But. Bro, no, no, no. I lost to a dude who talked about how cool it would be to use augmented reality in the factory. It was something I had done years oh before. Oh, my God. I'm like, what, what are these judges doing? What are you guys doing? Uh, I remember being like, dude, open, like, pay attention, man. I did this already. You're welcome. I was like, this is, the, I'm the, we're moving on. This paper was about doing, on. yeah. So crazy. <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Think forward. Think Jeez, forward. So forward thinking. Ridiculous. Oh, man. Yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows what we're going to be? I'm, I'm always, I love technology. You know, I love technology. I love getting gadgets and, and testing everything that, that hits the market pretty much. So, like, the idea that, you know, and it's part of the reason why I'm like, I, I want to you know, I want to be healthy and, and stay alive as long as I can, because I want to see what happens in my lifetime. I want to be there yeah. as long as possible yeah. to potentially see a flying car. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll see where, where things go. It's fun to it's fun to kind of like dive in. And some of these things can get really like mind melting, yeah. like to think about and, and scary in some ways. But so I'm telling you, yeah, I, topic. we're going to miss the mark on some of the things we said and we might hit in others. You know what I mean? And maybe, Underground tubes. maybe ready. Look there, dude. Maybe this is, this is the future. And oh, we're yeah. gone. You and I are long gone, dude, but they're watching this. They're not they're, even watching humans. We're AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching and they're like, these guys were the Nostradamuses of their day, man. What yeah, if we predicted That would be crazy. Yeah. That would be crazy because we are producing something that is going to be on the internet. And um, I'm shoot, maybe the internet's not, not even a thing anymore. Uh, thousands uh, of, you know, thousands yeah. of years from now, probably not. But like, this could be, this session right here could be. Uh, like available to humankind for hundreds of years to come. I, I believe it's, I, I think it's likely. Yeah. And so that's another thing is that, and uh, I realized that like a couple of years ago, I was like, dude, we're actually living through a critical time in humanity right now. We are living, we are w- witnessing the exit of the unknown. And what I mean by that is we are, I don't know what my great, great grandparents look like. I don't know what they look like. I don't mm-hmm. know what they were like. I don't know what they sound like. I don't know anything about them. Our great, 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 say great 50 more times, grandkids will be able to watch us do this. Yeah. They, they, this is like, they, we're leaving. the And they're going to cringe at, at the quality 
well, of how course. low def yeah. the way every all of this is. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, so for generations, uh, your ancestors have always been um, memorialized through stories and writings and, yeah. and uh, once upon a time paintings. Right. And now and then we started to move into pictures and that that had long like more longevity. But even cameras were invented not that long ago. Right now. And then video way after that. And now it's like and now it's been digitized. Mm -hmm. So for the first time ever, we're actually watching as it's going to be we're leaving the unknown. People are my yeah. great, 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 great grandkids are going to get to know what, who Skiz was. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. <laughs> All right. Oh man, man, that was a fun topic. I like. Yeah, that. I know. There's there's so many directions that we could have gone and just like sat in for a full podcast. Yeah, you know. So it's it's fun to cover a lot of different bases, though. Yeah. Anyway, I guess we should wrap this one up. Good job, man. I liked. Uh, I enjoyed watching your brain go through that. That was fun. Yeah. 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 It's fun to see what you came up with too. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> All right. See you next time, buddy. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> I'm scared of our humanity.